Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab and what I got for you today is going to be epic because I have the Tamron 70 to 300 millimeter full frame E-mount lens. Now this lens retails for about $550, but it's currently on sale at BH Photo for about $500. So there's $50 off. And BH Photo was kind enough to let me borrow this lens for this review. So be sure to check them out for your photography and video needs. So I'll be using my Sony a7C for this review and let's just get right into it. All right, so looking at this beast in my hands, you can see the size of it. And the lens actually weighs in at about 1.2 pounds or 545 grams. And uh, it grows quite significantly when you zoom it, as you'll see in a second, like so. So that's how big it gets. And then when you throw the lens hood on there, you know, obviously it grows quite a bit as well. It has a nice pinch style lens cap. I really like this style. It's really easy to get on and off. And it has a 67 millimeter filter thread on the front, you can see there. It also has the BBAR G2 lens coatings and a fluorine lens coating. It has 15 elements in 10 groups and it has a rounded seven blade aperture diaphragm inside there. It also has a minimum focus distance of 31 and a half inches or 0.8 meters. Now, as far as the build quality goes, let me show you what the back looks like here. Got the nice metal lens bayonet, as you can see there. It has, also has this rubber coating here which is nice weather sealing protection when it marries up to the uh, lens mount on the camera. There's the lens hood. Now, as far as quality feel goes, the zoom is a little bit harder than I would like. It's, it's almost like got a little bit of tension to it. It's not super smooth. And the focus ring doesn't really feel that great either, to be honest. It's, uh, it's kind of like scratchy could hear it. I mean, it works well, like it works good when you use it for manual focus. I used it quite a bit, especially when I was doing some of the lab testing stuff and it does work really good, but it just doesn't feel good. It's like, it just feels cheap. You know, it's one of those things where you kind of get what you pay for. Now this lens has a max aperture of F 4.5 at the 70 millimeter end and at the 300 millimeter end, we're looking at F 6.3. All right, I just wanted to show you what it looks like mounted to the Sony a7C here. And there you have it. Full zoom. All right, so let's move on to the lab testing. I'll show you how this performs in the lab and then we will move on to the real world. All right, guys, so here we are in the lab and I'm gonna to try to go through these as fast as possible. This is what we're looking at at 70 millimeter at the max aperture of f 4.5 and let me just zoom in here so you can see the sharpness detail on the dollars bill which is pretty darn good and then when we move out to the corner the corner sharpness here actually falls off quite a bit uh, it gets pretty there pretty soft there in the corner so looking at the distortion when i enable the lens profile you can see there's very little distortion correction so pretty impressed with that overall. Uh, the vignetting is quite significant though. You can see that there, the corner is getting brighter. All right, so let's move on to F 5.6 and we'll zoom in here. You can see the corners are still a little bit soft. Center area is looking really good though. And the bokeh rendering is looking pretty nice as well. So here we are at F 8. Corners are still soft here at F 8, but the center area, the dollar bill and the crayons looks really excellent. I don't see any flaring or fringing or anything like that. And then at F11 here, uh, we still have just a little bit of softness in the corner, but it looks pretty good at F11 at this distance. So corner sharpness is not really that good at 70 millimeter on this lens. So let's check out 100 millimeter. So here we're looking at approximately 100 millimeter. It's actually 101. And just so you know, I did raise the exposure about half a stop here on all these photos because I did slightly underexpose it when I was taking the test photos here. So looking at 101 millimeter, let's look at the corners and you can see the corners are very soft still. Let me show you what the distortion looks like. So you can see here there's quite a bit of distortion correction happening. And still again, of course, the corners aren't really going to sharpen up from that, but 
The center area looks pretty, pretty darn good, and there's very little fringing. I don't see any fringing or anything like that. So lens control overall is really good, just the corner sharpness isn't really that good. I mean, it is what it is. The corners are definitely soft on this lens, so, but we'll see how that shakes out in the real world. All right, moving on to about 140 millimeter here. If I zoom in, you can see the corner sharpness is still pretty horrible. Um, but the center sharpness is very good. As you can see right here, this is the center and it looks excellent. But as you move out to the edge, it gets soft, as you can see on the pipe cleaners down here. Um, but fringing and things like that, are very well controlled. The bouquet balls look okay. They do get chopped a little bit, turn into like the cat eyes uh, towards the edges and you get that spherical effect, which is very common with lenses. So I'm not too concerned about that. That looks pretty good. At f11 here at 140 millimeter, the corner sharpness does tack up pretty good though. So let me just show you what the distortion looks like here at 140. And you can see it's got a little bit of distortion there. Not too crazy, but a little bit. And here's 202 millimeter. Let me show you the distortion. It's a little bit, not too crazy. And looking at 200 millimeter corner sharpness is not that bad. It's a little bit better than uh, some of the other focal lengths. And center sharpness again is excellent not really seeing any fringing or anything, even on the super high contrast, there's a little bit of blue there, but really not much at all. And if we stop it down to F11, you can see the corners are looking a lot better, but still not razor blade sharp. Now, here at 300 millimeter, if we look at the center, we got really good sharpness. F6.3 is the max aperture, and if I enable the lens profile here, you can see there's a little bit of distortion as well at 300 millimeter, but not too bad. And if we stop it down to F8 and look at it, we're looking pretty good in the corner areas at F8. So that's good at uh, 300 millimeter. Now looking at the minimum focus distance here, this is at 300 millimeter and this is as close as I can get to the quarter. And you can see the sharpness looks very good. There is just a little bit of purple fringing, but that will go away when I stop down one stop, as you can see here. So at F8, that purple fringing is completely gone. At F6.3, there's just a little bit of purple there on the high contrast areas. The bouquet balls look pretty good, and if we just go through, we'll see how the aperture changes, the bouquet rendering, and uh, you know, just the sharpness on the quarter tacks up that little bit. This is actually F16 here. You can see it still looks pretty darn good, even at f16. Now, as close as I can get to the quarter at 70 millimeter, this is what it looks like. And you can see here I have a larger light source, so the larger light source renders quite a bit different than these small, you know, Christmas light lights. So that's what it looks like at 70 millimeter f4.5, and you can see the sharpness is excellent. I don't see any fringing or anything. Okay, ball renderings look really good as well. So if I just go through here and stop it down, F5.6, F8, F11, and F16. And notice how the light here still remains pretty round and these tend to octagon out the smaller light sources. So that's pretty much it for the lab testing. Let's move on to some real world photos. And I do have a lot of real world photos to show you so stay tuned, skip ahead if you want. I'm just gonna go through these pretty quick and you know talk. The EXIF data is up here on the top left if you need it. So you can reference what focal length I'm at, aperture and ISO and things like that. So here's my mountain bike here. And I was just taking some test shots. I put some new tires on and stuff. This is what it looks like at 100 millimeter. I was trying to get maximum background out of focus. So if you zoom in, you can see the background is quite blurry not as much as a faster aperture lens, but still, you can get some pretty darn good separation with this lens at 100 millimeter. Now here's pretty much the same shot at 240 millimeter. So you can see how the background changes drastically as you zoom in and move back. Even though the bike is pretty much the same size, the perspective is quite a bit different because I moved back like 20 feet or whatever to get this shot. And then here's what it looks like at 300 millimeter. And again, you can see the quality is excellent in the real world. Very good, very sharp, no problem here whatsoever. Corner sharpness or anything like that. Here's just the other side, you can check out the gears and stuff. I mean, you could argue that this is a little bit soft in the lower left corner here, 
But still, in the real world, I mean, it, it looks pretty darn good in my opinion. And here's just a picture of a leaf looking up. And you can see how cool that rendered. Looks really, really good. And these were shot in raw quality, by the way, just so you know. Now here's just uh, looking at the tree. I just wanted to show the specular highlights and how they render on the car headlights in the distance there. And if I zoom out at 70 millimeter, you can see the same shot, pretty much what I was doing. And this is what it looks like at 70, and this is what it looks like at 300. So pretty impressive. Here's just a spider web strand. I thought that was kind of cool. Somebody left their glasses on a bench. Just took a quick picture of those down at the Bashak Hill. It was really foggy in the morning here. This is what it looked like, 70 millimeter. This is at 250 millimeter. It was just a spider web with all the dew on it. I thought that looked pretty cool. You can actually see the spider over here or it's something caught in the web, whatever. Here's that bench again. It's at 96 millimeter. And here's zoomed into 300 millimeter. Now on this bench, you can see it has a little bit of distortion to it. So if I enable the profile correction, see how that distortion goes away? It looks like the bench, bench is actually curved a little bit and this straightens it right out. So there is definitely a little bit of distortion there. So don't be afraid to hit the enable lens profile correction when you're using uh, lenses and that'll straighten that out. Now here's just a picture of this cool purple flower or weed. I thought it came out really good and I actually just cropped it and put a little vignette on it to give you this version. So this is the same exact photo. I just edited it and cropped it a little bit to make the flower stand out a little better. Here's just another spider web. Here's a cool mushroom. Look at this thing. It's pretty cool. It looks like a looks like coral on the bottom. There's like a big drip of water hanging here. This is actually at ISO 10,000 because the lighting was quite low and the aperture was at f 6.3. So it is a little bit noisy but I was still really happy with how this photo came out. Now this is really just, I don't know, I just thought the branches coming off the tree looked kind of cool. They were so long and coming out so far away from the tree, it just created an interesting depth of field. You can see the tree branch is sharp here, but the tree is actually blurry. It was so foggy. Here's one of Layla, just a quick sample portrait. Nothing crazy, just a test shot. and see what you can do with this lens. Works pretty good for stuff like this. And same exact shot, except I was at 70 millimeter. I just wanted to show you how much zoom this lens has. So standing in the same spot, 300 millimeter, and then just simply zooming out. That's how far I was from Layla. And here's one of Jace. I thought this one was cool because I was like, I was like, yeah, what's up? They call me Skittles. <laughs> Cause he's holding Skittles and he's got that like, what are you looking at face? So it's like, they call me Skittles. So I said that to him and he started laughing. <laughs> here's one of John, pretty funny shot. Here's one of an airplane. These guys were jumping out, skydiving. Here's just one of Jace. I wanted to show you this one because of the, you know, just dynamic range, uh, high contrast, and it's not the sharpest image. I missed the focus on his face, but the way that it handled this super high contrast edge here, uh, the lens performed really well. So it's super good at fringe control, chromatic aberrations and things like that. Now look at this one here. If I zoom in on the plane, you could see Pretty cool. They open this door here and everybody jumps out. Here's a picture of the Salisbury Mills viaduct bridge. And I thought it was pretty cool. There's actually cows out there. You don't really see cows out there very often, but this image came out really good. You can see how sharp it is. It's at F 4.5. Corner sharpness is very good in the real world. No problem at all. But in the lab, you could see the corner sharpness was pretty horrible, but in the real world, I'm not noticing that near as much. Here's another one. This is at 300 millimeter. It's the cow eating some grass. And now here's a cow. I'm actually shooting through the weeds here. So you can see this weird out of focus blurry stuff in the foreground. That's actually the weeds I was shooting through, as you can see here. So that's what it looks like with the weeds. Um, but then when you just change the focus on the background, you get this and you can see the cows. Um, with that cool blurry foreground there. A cool Mustang just, uh, Shelby just drove by. So I turned around and took a quick snapshot of the car. It was actually going like 50 miles an hour or whatever. Still came out really good though. Here's another one of the trestle, just a weed here. Here's another one of the trestle shooting through some weeds. It's just a light on the top of a truck. Oh God, look at this creepy snake hiding in the grass here. You see that? That thing scared the hell out of me when I saw it. It was huge. The snake had to be like six, seven feet long. It was coiled up, but it was fat. In the big part of the snake, you could see how fat it was. Oh my God, it was terrifying. 
I was trying to take a picture of this. I was, I'm looking in the water here, and there was these uh, shells, like sh snail shells or whatever they are. And that's what I was trying to take a picture of. And then I looked to the left and saw that snake, and I was like, ooh. That's a different snake. This one was on top of the rock. He was much smaller than that other one. Apparently it's just a water snake. They're not poisonous. Oh, I went to the Vanderbilt Mansion and they had some cool stuff. I didn't go inside, but I was outside and I took a couple snapshots here. So I'm just gonna go through these quick. I don't know what's going on in these sculptures, but there's so much weird stuff. Oh, check this out. This is some lens flare. You can see the lens flare there. Not too bad, but the lens, the sun was right up here. And uh, you know, it was pretty well controlled overall, I would say. But yeah, like look at this. They have like fencing, like protecting all of it, I guess to keep the birds off. But like all this like cement work is just unbelievably intricate. I don't even know how they make that. I guess molds. And here's just a zoomed in version. Now, looking across the river, the Vanderbilt Mansion is actually on the Hudson River. So I just zoomed across the river at this, I don't know, mansion. Uh, a state or whatever you call it. And it's like kind of across the river from the Vanderbilt mansion. Now in the gardens, they had this cool sculpture. I thought this came out really good. Uh, the lighting was pretty intense. So the sun was shining directly on this sculpture or statue, whatever you call it. But look at this killer separation you can get from this lens. I was super impressed and it's very, very sharp, nice and detailed. So really good quality at the end of the day uh, in the real world. Now look at this bee. This is like a nasty bee. Look at that thing. It was really big. It was like an inch long at least. Now this is just a model of a house that's actually just to the left of this picture. Um, there's a house that looks just like this uh, and they made this model. I, I was super impressed. Now here's the uh, an angle of the garden. I actually edited this photo a little bit in Color Effects Pro. So it's a little bit more vibrant and contrasty than just a raw file. And here's the story on the garden, if you want to uh, pause the video and read that, it's pretty interesting. And here's just a few more looking down, trying to get some uh, cool compositions here. There's another one. This one came out really good, I thought. I enhanced it a little bit using uh, Color Effects Pro. That's what the raw file looked like with no enhancement. So right there, you could see what Color Effects Pro did. It brought out a lot of detail. And here's just another weird pottery thing. It's like, what the hell is going on here? There's a freaking pig they're shoving into. <laughs> they're shoving a pig into like this thing. It looks like they're stoking a fire. So I guess they're cooking the pig. I mean, I don't know. Crazy, crazy uh, scenes there. Now look at this uh, goose here. These things are so nasty. They, they, they like scream at you. Pretty sharp. And then this one, he kind of turned his head at this weird angle and was holding it there. He's like looking at me like side-eyed. It was like, what are you doing? Here's a picture of the actual mansion. And you can just see this thing is like incredible. Uh, this is at 70 millimeter and it's just really, really gorgeous. They just don't build stuff like this anymore. Now, same exact spot. I just took another shot at 135 millimeter. And again, like I said, in the real world, you could see the corner sharpness is good. Like it's good enough. It's not like in the lab where it's horrible in the corner or anything. It looks pretty good in the real world. So, you know, it is what it is. It's worth noting. That's zoomed in a 300 millimeter. Now looking across the river again, now I'm down by the actual river. So I'm at like river level view and there was a boat flying across. It was pretty cool. Um, and you can see that interesting estate up there in the uh, background. So I tried to make something interesting there with that photo. Here's another one. And this is just a cool house that's on the, uh, on the Hudson River. Then I went down to the Basha Kill, just took a couple of quick snapshots. That's where I got that snake photo that you saw earlier. Um, but I went back another time. So I wanted to get another picture of that snake. And sure enough, the snake was in the same spot, but in a different position. So I got this picture, came out really good, super sharp. I got a little bit closer to the snake. Not, I was still, this is 300 millimeters, so I was still like six feet away. But uh, I gotta tell you, my palms were sweaty when I was taking the shot. I was so scared the snake was gonna lunge at me and like bite my hand or something, but it didn't happen. Here's a neighborhood cat. Quite a nuisance, I thought at first, but it turns out the cat's actually pretty darn nice. And uh, it's kind of growing on me, I gotta say. And this one came out really good. The lighting was really excellent. And you can see just the sharpness and clarity on the eyes is pretty darn good. There we go. That is it for the real world photos. All right, let's move on to the conclusion and I will give you my final thoughts on this Tamron 70 to 300 millimeter lens. 
All right, so I put this lens through its paces for about three weeks now, and I gotta say, overall, the lens is really good, I would say, for the money. You know, it's not a great lens. The corner sharpness is pretty poor, as you saw in the lab testing, but the cost of the lens is really fairly low. Like right now, it's going for $500. The Sony 70 to 300 millimeter GOSS lens would be a much better option if you are looking for much better quality. That lens is sharp corner to corner, has a little bit better build quality, and it has optical stabilization built in. Although that lens goes for about eleven to twelve hundred dollars, depending on what the current sales are. So it's more than double the price of this lens. Now, this lens is a really great option though because it's super lightweight. It's very affordable considering the focal range you get and full frame coverage. So depending on your needs, you know, and your budget, this is a great option, especially because the center sharpness is really good and the fringing and chromatic aberration control is like top quality. So again, in the real world, most of the time, your eyes are going towards the subject that you're focusing on and they're not really looking at the corner sharpness per se. So again, depending on your budget, um, this is a good option. You know, I, I would definitely personally rather save the money and get the Sony 70 to 300 millimeter lens because it is significantly better, but it's so much more money that that might just be not an option for you depending on your budget. So if you have a lower budget and you're looking for a really decent telephoto zoom lens with 300 millimeter, you know, range of that which is quite good i would recommend the tamron 70 to 300. all right guys do me a favor hit that subscribe button thumbs up the video if you liked it i would really appreciate that and it would let other people know that's good video and so forth so all right if you have any questions be sure to ask in the comments area below and of course below the video in the description area will be all the links for this lens and all the gear i use for my reviews and stuff like that also i'll have a link to the sony 70 to 300 millimeter goss lens which i highly recommend check out as well. All right, have a great day. I will catch up with you guys next time. Please be safe out there and uh, take care.